What's up, y'all? I know this is like the most infrequent podcast ever as I straighten my hat. Go dogs, by the way. Georgia Bulldogs. <laughs> Throw that out there because if you're not a Georgia fan, then you just probably pull for somebody else or don't watch football or hide under rocks. I don't know what you do. But this is the Backwoods Life Podcast. I'm Michael Lee. I gave Kevin Knight a break this week because we just got back from Wisconsin. I love Wisconsin, by the way. Last night, rolled in here, I got home like 10 30 or 11 o'clock and crashed. And I've been out here working on stupid crap all day. But regardless, I'm here now. And I have an important part of the show. New podcast edition, Miss Anna Vogler. Don't everybody get too excited. <laughs> there was much rejoicing from the crowd. I could just mentally hear everybody going, hell yeah. I think I hear them a little bit. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. You can hear yeah. it everywhere. So for those of y'all that don't know Anna, she's been a great friend of mine for, good gosh, 100 years now. Yeah. Is that right? Yep. 100. 100, 100 years now. And we, we've, we've hunted together. We've laughed together. We've fished together. We've had a ball her and, and her other half philip and beth and i kevin my dad i mean we're we're all it's all part of the family now like that's just part of it so i was brainstorming one day and i was like you know what this podcast is missing something it's always got ugly guys on it so we want <laughs> the beautiful woman on here to go with us that's what we uh-huh. want that's what that's that's what really the whole play here mm-hmm. honor your 100 percent clickbait just accept that and that's just what it's going to be if we're being honest, I mean, that's, you know, we're transparent here, I guess. No, <laughs> other than being awesome, she uh, she loves to hunt, she loves to fish, and she could probably uh, work most men under the table, and she shot, she shot some good deers, and <laughs> she's very competitive fishing, we know this for a fact. That's bad. Probably the best smack talker on the pond. I'm just Don't kidding. tell people my secrets. Oh, shh. <laughs> so hey welcome thank you for being here absolutely thanks for having me on the podcast i'm well, excited <clears throat> hopefully this is a regular occurrence and we can grow this thing to levels unprecedented and be up to like 12 viewers a week oh yeah 12 set the bar low and you'll never Perfect. be disappointed <laughs> that's usually why i have kevin on here to keep the bar low <clears throat> I'm just kidding, Kevin. You're going to hear this, and you're probably going to wonder why you're not on here. And it's just because on and I decided at, like, literally 2.58 today to do a podcast, and it's 3.17. So here we are. Right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Throw him completely under the bus. <laughs> He's not on here. It's not his fault. He's busy. He's got right. stuff to do That's today. Right. And like I said, I hadn't done one of these. The last one we did, I don't even remember. It's been several weeks ago, and I've had people ask, like, hey, when's the next podcast? And I said, I don't know. Well, we're going to start rolling them out from here on out. Yes, now Anna's in charge of the podcast. Yeah, there's no telling what we're going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, squirrel. <laughs> yeah. It could divert very quickly. Yes. So there will apologies be in advance. <laughs> yes, there will, there will be big, deep. Pigeon holes and wormholes and squirrel nests and backlashes and you know all that stuff, right? Yeah. So, um, well, to, to catch everybody up, like who Anna is, um, you probably you might have seen her on some of our social media stuff before and on our videos and um, around hunting lease and all this good stuff. So, I mean, how long have you been hunting? Oh, at least 18 years. See, yeah. you're not just one of these Insta famous wannabe chicks. Like you got street cred. <laughs> like, true. like you started hunting a long time ago. You didn't be like, oh my God, I'm doing it for the likes. I've got like one buck on the wall. I'm an absolute professional now. I've been doing it 18 years. I can tell everybody what to do. Exactly. There you go. There See, you go. Just ask me for advice. I'll and, now, and, and now you'll have, you just have sponsors beating down your doors and so while i'm on this wormhole here we go on the on, on back oh. michael e brain power as a woman out there in the hunting industry on some little level i mean you do your own thing and you're in all kinds of stuff you like to hunt and fish and 
you got your chickens, you do tons of stuff around your home. You know, you, you're not scared to use all the tools around the house to redecorate, to remodel, to tear out walls, to rip up floors, to pave driveways, to planting trees, to mowing grass, to running the track. Like you're a versatile country girl, right? Absolutely. I'm a chameleon. A chameleon. <laughs> right now, she just changed from beautifully tan to extremely red on that comment. Just, just, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, but with all that being said, like, how do you feel when you get on social media? And it, and it's kind of evolved a little bit over the last couple of years, I think, in in a good way. But there for a while, like, it was like, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not gonna. I'd say for the most part, like Instagram, because I used the term Insta famous a while ago. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, I'm drinking like this prebiotic soda, and it's making me burp orange. So that's why you don't with me. drink and podcast. Yeah, that's just the way it goes. Sometimes this is live. <laughs> um, but like, how does it make you feel? Like you're out there trying to do things, you know, quote the right way. I mean, you're not just showing off the uh, OnlyFans assets, as I like to call them. Right. Uh, like like a lot of these women do on social media to get more likes and stuff. And look, I'm not knocking it. I mean, if you want to do that, that's your thing. That that's go for it. But when it comes to the hunting world, how does that make you feel when you see kind of the outdoor space, quote unquote, getting kind of declassed? Like you know, not class, not being classy, kind of trashy. Trashy. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I didn't want to throw it out there. Like you can say it because you're a woman. Like I don't. I'll, I'll be like a. I mean. I'll be like a male chauvinist if I throw stuff out there like that. So. so what, yeah. what's, what's your thought? Like, well, how 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 do you how does a what is a woman's perspective on that? On being trashy. <laughs> no, I mean. <laughs> oh, but just like how like when you scroll through Instagram and you know maybe you just hop on like how you can go to just explore and you can just see all these random posts and you see all this kind of stuff. I mean, how, cause like from a guy's standpoint, we, we, we see it as uh, the, just guys hit the like button just because of what it is at face value. It's not really about learning something or that product they're using or anything like that. It's just about a pretty face. Right. Right. So from um, a woman's perspective, how does that, how does that thought process work? My thoughts are like, what is that female's motive and how yeah. is she helping other females um, that may not have this society's, uh, what am I trying to say? You know, society's view of like a magazine woman, you know, like how does that make other women feel um, and getting to the hunting world if they're not in it already like I'm already in it like I've been hunting forever I feel like so so you just kind of like tune it out a little bit right yeah I tune it out yeah but, um, you, but you hit the nail on the head think, like what what if you're a, a woman you know and you and you probably gotta have friends that hunt and that don't hunt and you may mm-hmm. have like female friends that think it's kind of neat and they want to check it out but you know they, they've got you as a resource of course but what if like you've got women out there that uh, you know, maybe interesting getting hunting, but then when they scroll across social media, they just see kind of all this P and A. Well, that that's one way to put it. Yes, fake like fake. This is fake, right? It's 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 just it's literally posting <laughs> pictures just for likes. It's not really them trying can, to be better. Yeah, it can totally um deter a female. I feel like because they're. <laughs> because it's just going to make them feel like they're not living up to some standard or something. And that's not the standard. Um, if that makes sense. No, you're right. I mean, no, it, it's, it's like, I feel like there needs to be some value behind it maybe, but Hey, if you're pretty and beautiful and got all the assets, then yeah, you, but it just, yeah. It's kind of like if, if you, if you really want to be taken seriously, and right. yeah and you, that that's you, that's the key like i feel have, like some of that you're just you're not going to be taken seriously your motives are wrong a little bit they're just off um you're just really not helping other women you're just helping your likes on your page there you and go you that that's what that. i was looking for because um you know from from a, a marketing standpoint 
you you got women out there that may have I mean, a million followers on Instagram. Right. And then, you know, company XYZ is like, oh, I want you to use my product and da 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 da. I mean, I, I I'm in I'm in the outdoor industry. I'm I'm as in deep as anybody can get as far as, you know, marketing and video and everything like that. And I see the the grind of social media, so to speak, but you know, as a marketer, I want people out there that are real, that are genuine, that represent our brand for exactly. our brand message. Right. You know? Not to be, oh, well, if they use this bow, it's going to get 20,000 likes on a post, but I'm not going to, I mean, nobody cares what the, bo- nobody cares about the bow in that picture. You see what I'm saying? They're, they're right. looking at the picture for the other reasons in the picture. Ah, uh, yeah. And I would rather have somebody that I'm working with that they're going to go out there and they're going to represent the brand. They're going to actually go hunting and, and be successful at it on, on some level right? Um, to show proof of concept, like with our products. Yeah. And I feel like also, if you are a female, like you don't need to just be jumping on every offer that comes your way. I totally feel like you need to be investigating that company, um, see what their values are and what they stand for as well. But not everybody does that either, but I would want to be representing a company with good quality as well, because the company wants quality over quantity. Well, right. I agree with that. And, and, you know, you know how it works in the social media world. I mean, every company out there reach out to, to attract the women and say, Hey, we want to give you a discount code to tell everybody about your stuff. Mm-hmm. And you get a half a percent of all the sales and you you don't get anything is my point. You know I mean? It's, it's all, and, and then social media, the more it gets flooded with people advertising and use this code and use that code to me, that deters your audience from actually following along. Like those posts, you can see the numbers there, those engagement on those posts go to crap. Right. Unless unless you're just like, look, I'm giving away a free bow right now. Yeah. Then that's different. Then then people might engage more in that. But if it's like, Oh, here's 10% off. 10% 10% off don't get me excited for crap unless I'm fixing to buy like a million dollars something. No, I agree. You, you know, like, t- like seriously, like, like, he, like I can go on Amazon and buy this remote for like $12. 10% off. Really? What? Like, like that's not worth me even going and typing in the code. All right. I don't get excited. You give me 50% off, we'll talk. But yeah, not yeah. even, but then it's not going to be a $12 or something. It's going to have to be Give me give me fifty percent off a hundred dollars, then I'll get excited. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna, hold on, stand by. We're take everybody take a, a, a water drink, a soda yes, drink. Sure. It is. This is for a healthy gut. <laughs> healthy gut. Sorry about that. <laughs> I got a gut. There it is. Oh, hey, you, mm-hmm. on table muscle one oh one. Oh, I think that's my favorite part about hunting is eating. Yeah. And, think about and that. backpack snacks. What's that? Backpack snacks. And Everybody see, knows about backpack snacks. My problem was I was raised by my father <laughs> who takes nothing. Right. <laughs> not me. You, you've been with my dad before. Like he's not going to, he, he's going to mix him with cocktail maybe and go sit in a shooting house and with, with somebody else. But Mm-hmm. and that's it he's not taking snacks he's doing good to have his dad yeah, gun, gun and bow with him why do you think he loves me so much because you bring the snacks i bring food 100 he's like something he's like, after the hunt <laughs> it, it doesn't matter where we go like if we're going somewhere and i'm like he all who's coming well philip's coming is that was anna coming <laughs> uh, well shit <laughs> yeah. It's like I'm not. I don't want to go now. If Anna's not coming, because she, I said, why? Because she brings all the snacks. That's right. So, but but I mean, the hunting in general, as far as food wise, we eat great at the hunting camp. There's no doubt. Mm-hmm. And whenever we go on trips, which we just got back from, I need to talk about that in a minute. But yeah, uh, yeah, we got to hear about your trip. We ate ridiculously good up there. Good. Our buddy Jared that we go hunt with. Uh, his wife cooks for us like the whole time, just about. Mm-hmm. Hold on, it's one of those dang gum prebiotic burps coming on here. <laughs> um, Mute. <laughs> but, but, um, yeah, the food up there is so good. 
But that's part. But that's but that's like one of the best parts to me about going to a hunting camp. It's like mm -hmm. you, 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 people are, you know, we cook and hang out and visit and all that. And that's as fun as the hunting part to me. And road food is horrible. Like we're on the road going and filming and stuff. We're eating terrible. But we get to the hunting camp places. Most time the food's phenomenal. It's like we just got back from Wisconsin and our buddy Jerry, his wife cooked. Like there's so much local stuff that they cook up there. Like they grow their own apples in their yard. Mm. They've got giant apple trees. So we ate, and the and the colder it gets, the more freezes they have on these apples, the sweeter right. they get. Oh wow! So like, interesting. Just big old red apples. Mm. So she makes cakes and pies out of them while we're there. She makes they have they grow wild rice up there, and they harvest their own rice. Jared said they like float around a canoe backwards so if somebody paddles a canoe the other person's backwards and they go down through the rice and just knock shake the rice off in the in the boat right then they go huh. get all the rice out but it's great it's awesome so she cooks chicken and rice all the time they have mm. their own grown locally grown cranberries mm. so she makes cranberry applesauce oh my god yeah it's stupid it's so stupid. like why wouldn't i invited because you know i'd probably eat everything oh no yeah, you are Kevin, you just got booted on us taking your spot. I'm here for food. <laughs> You're going to uh, Wisconsin next year. Okay. <laughs> no, but no, um, but it's like that when we go. Like we go to Texas, you'll have local food from Texas. And that's the awesome part of mm -hmm. it. Like what we do, really. Mm -hmm. One of the best steaks I've ever had in my life was in Bird City, Kansas, middle of nowhere. Never heard of it. Exactly. That's my point. There's places out there hiding from us all over. <laughs> But hunting camp is one hundred and one great place to eat. Like at ours, you know, we have our, our kitchen in there. We have, you know, our, our drink fridge is always stocked full of, you know, various appropriate drinks. Uh, yeah, very various uh, things so we stay hydrated. Say that. Then we have our regular refrigerator, which stays slap full of food when we're there. And then we've got the shelves over to the side. The snack shelves. Exactly. We've got a Kevin shelf, which is all little Debbie's. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He keeps us stocked on little, yeah, on little Debbie's. That. Then we got the Phillips shelf. And that might be like Pop Tarts and yeah. Bear Claws or such. And then we got the Anna and Beth shelf, which is like all organic, non GMO, low fat, <laughs> fat free, sugar free cardboard wafers. <laughs> we may have our own hidden secret shelf somewhere. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, I wasn't supposed to expose that. Beth is oh. gonna kill me. <laughs> withdraw the statement, Your Honor. Oh, withdrawal. But we do have the, the candy container in the refrigerator as well. So you gotta have some sweets. And then we got ice cream, but every time Philip and Kevin get over there, it goes away. Yeah. yeah. Well, well that's fine. They get a you know a gallon each. It's fine. So but we just got back from Wisconsin. Um Kevin and I both shot deer up there. Uh, we we got up there the first afternoon and it was it was cold like it, I say cold we went from eighty five here to the high was like fifty the first two days lows in the upper twenties and a little bit rainy the first afternoon I got in the stand started seeing deer right away had some does come out and um, Jared's always got like these hit list deer for us because uh, he's got some deer that you know he doesn't want to shoot obviously they wants to give him another year or whatever and see how many we get and all this stuff so we kind of got a little 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 hit list and we have it's probably five or six bucks on there that were okay these these guys show up y'all make sure we get try to get a shot at them and first afternoon i'm in there 15 20 minutes here comes one a buck right out I, and i'm this it never happens that quick that early um comes out he's speeding around i get ready and I draw back and I get to where I'm anchoring my 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 hand around my face on my neck where I get my string on my nose and looking through my peep. And as soon as I get the bow back and I'm anchoring down, he turns and runs off. No. Oh. I know that. So I let it down. I'm just like, well, what the crap? Like I wind was not great. Um, I don't know if he got a whiff of us or if he saw some movement or something, but anyway. I was this close to being done in like 15 minutes. Dang. Yep. And that's, you know, I was like, well, 
Might be one of them trips. Right. So I was like, yep, here we go. Very nice book. So anyway, we hunted till dark there. Um, none of the other shooter butts came out. Saw a bunch of those. Saw a couple, you know, going to be good for real good up and comers. And uh, some small guys. Turkeys everywhere. I'm like, I'm I'm going turkey hunting in Wisconsin. You can write that. Right. There's a pile. So, go back. Um, I think Kevin, Kevin saw quite a few deer too. I don't remember. He's, I think he saw a couple of maybe the shooter bucks, but they were too far away. Didn't get shots. Hmm. So, um, the next day we get up. Mornings were terrible. We didn't see hard. I mean, we see you see deer, but you, it'd be like a few does and dinks, little little yeah. year and a half. Old. <laughs> uh, yeah, little strubs. What was was trick starter kits like little starter, starter kits, kits. Yeah, yeah yeah so uh <laughs> we saw a few of them and then afternoons were when it really got good so uh my buddy Rick went with me and he'd never hunted up there so I was I kind of about me and him bounced back and forth filming each other um so he was I was filming him which we'd take our boat both of us would take our boat because one day we hunted in a, in a big blind like an enclosed blind. And so we had room to take both of our bows. So we'd take both. I just kind of tuck mine out of the way in case uh, Rick got done and I could hunt a little bit till we got out of there. But we didn't see any any shooter but Well, I did. I saw one the second afternoon, but he was a little bit on the small side of the spectrum as far as he – was, he was good enough to shoot, but I was like, eh, kind of would rather give him another year if I had a choice. But – Right. Anyway, he, he, I never got a shot at him anyhow, so it didn't matter. We saw, we did see one really big deer that that evening, but he stayed to our left and went away from us. So it was a mess. Um, that was day two, day three, morning, morning three, we saw turkeys and does again. Then the afternoon, day three is when I shot, when I, the one I shot. And we've been in a stand a, a little while. We, we had deer come and go. And two bucks came out. One of them was was a shooter. So he came out there. He was probably 18 yards. I had mm. eight or nine does out there. I was really worried I wasn't going to get drawn back. Like, it was just like. Eyes everywhere. They're, they're like. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. I think they're eating through their feet. They're like. Oh. All right. <laughs> you know, and. Um, but anyway, I finally eased the bow back. Got set. Made a good shot. He went crashing off and piled up. So. Got him down. Um, I think he had actually he had weird on his right side. It was like something happened to his beam when he was in velvet. Like he must have got poked with something, and so it, it forked. It grew like two beams on the on the tip, like the end of his that his right beam split out. Huh. Here, I have a picture. I can show no. it to those of us on the uh, World Wide Web here. Yeah. You can see it. You can see it in this picture right here. Whoop! Oh, oh there. Kind of, kind of bright. It's kind of bright. Yeah. Dang it. I don't, I don't know. I'll post it um, as soon as I can. But, yeah, he had a weird double beam. It's like when that thing poked, it split, and then it grew a tine on each one of the splits. So it was really weird. Really cool deer. I think he ended up with about maybe 15 points that were actually scoreable. He had a bunch of little trash and stuff on him, so. That was cool. And so I shoot my deer and he runs off, crashes, piles up. And I'm sitting there like, all right, well, heck yeah, we got one down. Text Kevin, hey, you shot me a buck. Then the next thing I know, I look down in the food plot and there's a buck walking out. And I was like, oh, there's another buck. Get binoculars up. He's got an arrow hanging out of him. It's Kevin's arrow. What? Yep. Kevin was sitting, I don't know, we were, we were several hundred yards apart. He shot this deer and it was, he's kind of contorted, he said, and turned. And if he was here, I'd obviously let him tell the story. But he shot a deer off to his right and he hit him back and it uh -huh. came, out, came out back. And he ran obviously towards me. And when he stopped, he just he kind of saw him. He walked up in the food plot. He's just standing there and the, arrow, the whole arrow is hanging out of the deer. Just the, the flinch oh. was holding it in. God. And like, I was like, this dude don't look good. And he was just getting kind of wobbly and all that. And then he walked into the first tree on the wood line he got to. He just laid down. And 30 minutes later, he was dead. What? We just sat there and watched him. And he just fell over. I, that was it. 
Holy cow. Now that's all, wild. All I can say is, well, one, what's the odds of that? Like, what's the odds that you right. shoot a deer, making a bad shot, and then it goes right to where I can watch him lay down and we don't lose him. Right. Because he goes 100 more yards. He's in stuff taller than me. Right. Just grown up mess. Dang. So, yeah, that, I mean, then, you know, we ease down and, hey, call Kevin. Like, hey, buddy, got your deer right here. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Dang. That, that, was, and that's, that was that. That was cool. That was an um, easy recovery. <laughs> yeah, it could have went really bad. Like, right. that was the best, worst, the, the best worst case, or the worst, no, the best worst case scenario. That's what I was trying to say. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't the worst best case, I guess. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm just going to agree with you. I'm confusing myself now. But <laughs> anyway, we got his buck, and that deer was 286 pounds. Holy cow. Yeah, put it in spectrum. That it's is a cow. I, I, yeah, right? Jeez. Up there in the cheese land, milking cat, milking, milking, making deer cheese. Oh, my God. Sounds horrible. You don't know how old it was? Uh, I think we decided he... Was at least five, could have been older seven. Dang, that was yeah. fat deer. Mm -hmm. Wow. He been eating a lot of little Debbies too. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was that was awesome. We got that. Um, and his deer was a nine or a ten point. Just big old mature buck. Okay. And then my buddy Rick. So the last day, Kevin and I obviously were done. So we're back at the. I was actually helping clean deer. And uh, Rick went out, and the last afternoon, he shot one. He had one that came in. And um, it's funny because so my wife, Beth, went with me out there. It's been three or four years ago. And she killed a great buck up there. But mm -hmm. he had these weird little, like, daggers that, on the inside of his rack that went in. Like, he had his mainframe, like, 10 point, and then he had these two more points that went in like this. Huh. But there was a buck <clears throat> that looked just like him, except a smaller version. Had the same two little dagger points going inside like that. Yeah. And so Jared named him Mike's wife. That's that's what he named the deer. What? Looked, he, he named the deer Mike's wife because he looked just like the buck Mike's wife killed. My oh, wife. okay. So he's like, okay. They call that buck Mike's wife because he looks just like the one she killed. And I was like, that's crazy. I mean, what's the odds of that? And especially years later. Why are people text me in the middle of podcasts? <laughs> but anyway. Um, so Rick shot that deer. He shot the Mike's wife buck. Yeah. All right. So Rick, I mean, this is the biggest deer Rick's ever shot. He he shoots him. Oh man! Makes a great shot. I mean, the video is stupid. Just like when the when the fletchings go through, and his blood just shoots out, and you know, like, great shot kind of stuff. So he runs off, and he's done. And like they turn the camera back around to Rick, and Rick's like losing his mind. He's like, "Oh my gosh, that's the biggest buck I ever shot!" And then he goes, mm -hmm. "That we call that deer Mike's wife." He said, "That's the stupidest name I've ever heard for a deer. I don't know why we call that, but <laughs> I just smashed Mike's wife." <laughs> So I was like, well, okay then. That's just Poor choice of words. No. <laughs> huh? Poor choice of words. <laughs> no, it was just funny. I mean, we kind of we were kind of joking around about that if somebody That's just hilarious. how we were gonna play it with it. But you know, Jerry's yeah. like, Beth's gonna probably kill me next time she's up here. I was like, eh, probably not. It'd be all right. Eh. But anyway, that was pretty funny. It was a great deer though, Rick's biggest deer. Um mm. I don't know how many points that deer had. He's bad. 14 i think because mm -hmm. the two little insides and he had but you know just some, some stuff and so anyway it was a good trip we did that kevin shot a doe too while we were there jared shot a couple of does while we were there so we had plenty of meat and we rolled hey, on back yesterday that was first trip of the season out of the way and um now it's back to good old 85 degrees and all right dry so where, where are y'all headed next uh we i leave next week on thursday or friday go to kentucky for four or five days okay so i'm going up there rick texas going with me on that uh, my buddy chris cooper and my buddy john michael page are all going up there 
Okay. Doing a little bow hunting. Okay. So shoot some more bucks. There you go. And then um, come back. And then after Halloween, go to me and Kevin are going to Texas. Okay. We got a new 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 company product pimp. Um, seventeen seventy six ammo out of Florida signed up with us for advertising on Backwoods Life, and I actually got a box of their ammo. Like I say, a box, like several boxes of ammo that I've got to sight some guns in with. I'm pretty excited about that. And they they invite us to come out to them. They they go out and um they got a twenty five thousand acre ranch in Texas that they rent out like the to hunt for a week and wow. we're out there. Um. Opening day is November the third or something, third or fourth, and we're going out there early and we're going to spend one day just on the shooting range. Wow, that'll be fun. Yep. Then we're going to go deer hunt for three days after that and come back home. There you go. So life is good. There you go. Other than all this traveling and airport life, but mm-hmm. back to our lovely heat in Georgia. Oh man, yeah. oh. it's so dry. Like it's not even fun. Yeah, yeah. I gotta go get on the tractor uh, Thursday probably over at release, and we we haven't planted food plots because it's been too dry. Like it would really do no good to plant food plots right now. Yeah. My dad, I talked to him while he said it's supposed to rain tomorrow. I think. But, yeah, I noticed that too in the forecast. Maybe uh, we'll get some. I I don't have a lot of faith in it myself. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. So, well, so what about you? Like you've been, I mean, this, is, this isn't just the Michael Talks podcast. This is <laughs> all on us here too. You've been hunting. I've been seeing your snaps. So back there, trying to stick one with your bow. Yeah, been trying. Just watching at this point. Uh, just keep seeing a doe and her yearling. It's a little button head. They'll pop out every now and then. Um, I saw a real crazy looking spike the other day. He still had velvet on his head, but it was limping. Had like a big huge uh nub on its like right foot like it was just big and swollen Mm -hmm. and then like it had a big old growth on the right side of its jaw and i was like man this this little spike must have got hit it's crazy because like deer so resilient um i don't know that's just my guess but yeah i watched him he came right up underneath me and filmed him just a little bit and it's always cool to have him like walk right up underneath you but then let's see so i think it was sunday evening sunday afternoon i went out um and uh, about it was it was getting good right you know whenever the sun sets down behind the, the trees I had that doe and her uh, yearling come out watch them for a minute well as soon as I always see a deer I always get my bow up and ready like that's just what I do just so I'm always ready and prepared in case something else comes out I'm, I'm already like halfway in motion mm-hmm. <laughs> so um anyway they came out they they ate and um, mama never went to the feeder and so then we um I'm sitting there and I'm just, you know, patiently waiting. I'm like, all right, this this might be all I'm going to see, you know, but man, she kept looking hard to one in one direction. And so of course I, my eyes are following where she's looking. And, and then a little bit later on, like they're about right up underneath me at this point, the t- mama and her yearling. And I look up and I see this big Brown shadow, like way out in front of me, you know, popped out. I was like, oh crap, what is this? I know it's a buck, yeah, right? Like they always show up like last minute. And I'm like, man, that's a much bigger body. And so it came out and comes out to the feeder. And I and at this point, it's it's like I'm losing daylight. And obviously you lose more daylight when you're trying to look through a peep site and your site and trying to get it all lined up, you know. So it's coming to the feeder and all I could see was like some white of the horns. I was like, man, so... I just, I could tell it wasn't the one that I was wanting to show up, but that's okay. I still had a buck come out. He ate for a little bit. He eased on back in the woods and I got down after it was getting dark and they left. So that was exciting. How are you shooting? <laughs> I, I wasn't going to shoot that thing. He wasn't, uh, wasn't old enough or big enough for me. That's not the one I wanted. Oh my gosh. That's all right. Whatever so, makes you happy. I'll let him walk. And then, uh, you gotta ask so, yourself, what would Philip do? He would have let it walk. That's what he says now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would have let it walk. <laughs> Listen though, Mama was looking pretty tempting though because she was a big old body, and I was like, man, I swear I'm getting trigger happy over here. I'm ready to let one fly. <laughs> uh, then you have that little fella running around all year without his mama. 
I know. I'm she yeah. There, like, Mama, where are you at? Yeah. He didn't have spot. Yeah. He'd been fine. Yeah. <laughs> you actually stay there. You stay there and grow up, man. Yeah. So uh anyway, should I tell everybody about what we just saw on our trail camera? Oh, Do you yeah. remember what happened yesterday? Yeah, no, no, I mean, yeah. Okay. All right. So everybody's like got all these um cell phone texting cameras, right? And of course we have one. So we have our spy point camera set up out there. And um Philip, my husband, called me and says, Hey, have you looked at the trail cameras? And I was like, No, I hadn't had time, like blah, blah, blah. So he's like, You won't believe this. He goes, But the feeder is gone. I said, What? The feeder's gone. How's the feeder gone? Like this anyway and he's like I don't know and I wasn't at home I couldn't go check on it whatever he wasn't home he's out like logging or uh, marking timber so anyway we're looking at the trail camera pics and a buck had put his head in the feeder and got it stuck between two two by fours <laughs> and apparently drug it off so of course, now we're panicking and hoping that this buck is not like back there stuck in the feeder and it's 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 not in the camera view and and we're freaking out. So anyways, but later that afternoon, Philip got home. He went back there to check on it. Thank God it wasn't in there, but the, the roof of the uh, feeder was all been up. Feeder was laying on the ground. That was wild. I've never seen that before. <laughs> Poor guy. He will never, never approach a feeder again. He is ruined. He might so. be back. He might be back. <laughs> he might be like, I'm not going to let the thing whip me. Yeah, yeah, that was wild. I was like, "Wow, I've never had that on camera before." But yeah, that's crazy. I've had we had a um, mineral block we put out, and uh, we didn't have we didn't have a camera. We had a camera close, but we went back. We put it out, and like two days later, we went back. It's gone. Like the whole block. Like you know how big these? The, yeah, like, they're the, big. The cattle mineral blocks. I'm thinking what like and ten it, pounds or something. They're pretty heavy. Take some a while to you know dissolve and get eaten yeah, down. Yeah, right. I mean, you just put them out and they go away over time. Right. We couldn't find this thing, and we <laughs> we went walking through the woods and we finally found it. And all we could figure is a, is a hog came up to it and they start they like rolled it down the hill. What? Yeah, like the hog went crazy <laughs> on that thing. I, I've never seen it before. We found it, put it back. Huh. Never happened again. All right. You can't hmm. make, that's big Mike world up there. That's that you can't make stuff up, up there. Oh, he shot a doe uh yesterday morning. Did he? Yep. When? Yesterday morning. Hot dog. He got yeah. some meat in the freezer. Yep, big Mike. He said he, she big he, was, he said, Oh, she's probably about one fifty. <laughs> yeah. I didn't weigh her, but she's probably one fifty. Yeah. And Bobby, uh my cousin in law, he was up there and there he was bow hunting too, and he killed a doe with his bow. He actually shot shot one that they found and um text messages what but um yeah he shot one and they actually shot two they didn't find the other one. dad said it went into some god awful thick stuff and dad's like i can't i we i can't go no further in here so yeah good luck but he said he thinks he hit her really high so it probably mm -hmm. may have just cut her didn't didn't kill her so anyway she shows back up we'll take care of business yeah but that's about you know that time. It's that time of the year. October eleventh is today, actually. So everybody talks about the October lull. Have you ever heard of October lull? You know what I'm talking about? No, but I can believe it because it's full moon right now, and oh, I'm not. Exactly. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. It doesn't help. That's for sure. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm not. A, I'm not. A, I mean, the guys that hunt, they say you know the full moon. You need to sit in the middle of the day and all this stuff. I'm not discounting anybody's philosophy. I think the more time you spend in the woods, the more successful you're going to be. I mean, if I sat there from daylight to dark, I'm probably going to see more deer than just sitting four hours, you know? And you'll learn a lot more too. <laughs> but I can't do it. I don't want to sit out there from by myself from daylight to dark. That sounds horrible. You'd have to have a lot of snacks. <laughs> I, need, I need a friend. I can't sit out there by myself. I'd be like. I'd be hangry. I'd be in there cooking. I, you would be time. out of snacks like in the first three hours. And you'd be like, uh-oh, <laughs> we got a real problem now. Because we do that all the time. Me and Brantley went on a hunt in Alaska one time, and we'd go up this river, and you just sit on the river all day, and you watch. And so, man, we piled up food. Like, we had all kinds of stuff. By noon, we done ate everything we had. Dang. Like, we were making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Like, we had the whole jars 
of and a loaf of bread. That's how I mean that's how you just bored eat, you know, you're not even hungry. You're just like, well, that looks like something to do right now. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Unless I'm, I mean, I can sit a long time um, if I'm seeing deer. If I'm, if I'm just, but I sat in Ohio one time. I did the day like the dark thing one day. I remember I saw deer like the first two hours of the day and I saw deer the last hour of the day. Mm. The rest of the day, you're just sitting there watching the wind blow going, I really need to question my sanity of being a hunter right now. <laughs> Yeah, but that's dedication. <laughs> no, it's stupidity. Because <laughs> there's a fine line between hunting and sitting <laughs> in the woods looking stupid. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me. I've been doing this a long time. I don't know. I mean, I guess if I hunted somewhere like a like Iowa or maybe Missouri, Illinois, Kansas, whatever, where it just like the rut is stupid good and the, there is some giant deer all the time. And I do, I have hunted all those states, but I don't know. I just, I, I mean, I hunt because I like to hunt and the success of it. But at the same time, part of me is like I said earlier, it's, I'm, I'm older and over a lot of proven crap right now. I mean, I'm to the point where I just want to have fun. And right. if, if, if I got to sit in a deer stand all day by myself, that's not fun. I ain't going to do it. All right. I mean, if I got somebody to sit with me and we want to try to sit all day weekend, but we're probably not going to do that either, but we'll sit for a while. I mean, we had a cameraman on Ohio trip that sat with me all day and he was even kind of like, yeah, this is stupid. Oh, God. <laughs> so, but you will be more successful if you hunt all day. I, I promise you that. If every day you went hunting, you sat from daylight to dark, you'll see a lot more deer. you probably kill a lot more deer. But I go to there have fun, hang out and visit and enjoy being in the woods not just i don't have to kill something all the time i'm going to every once in a while just because i go enough i don't have to (laughs) these walls are here like bro see this pile right here Mm -hmm. i ain't gotta prove nothing to nobody that's right (laughs) just go hunt and have fun right that's right but I hope you do get to shoot one of those bucks we'll see. The house there because there's a couple nice ones back there. Mm-hmm. There's one that's only shown up twice, and I sure wish he'd come back. And he might. You never know, but that's why I just yeah. keep going. <laughs> yeah, right. You never know. I mean, it, it's fun because here behind our house, we got my put a red name blind back there in the woods. And I mean, I hadn't even said in it yet, but it's not really a good time yet. I'm waiting for it to cool off, but. Um, it's just neat to be able to go walk in your backyard and go hunting, sit there for a while and chill out and relax, and then come back to the house. You don't have to do much. Super simple, right? That's right. And then, you know, you kill one, it's, it's a bonus. That's right. Cherry on the cake, icing on top of the cake, whatever. Yeah, they cherry think. on, yeah, cherry on the something. Cherry in the old fashioned. That's what we we'll go with. <laughs> Jerry, an old fashioned. All yeah. right. <laughs> best, best drink ever. Uh, so, they're pretty good. Well, all right. That's what's been going on. Um, I don't really know much else to talk about right now until we make some more hunting memories here in the near future. What about you? Man, just. You got anything in your notes over there that we, 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 we missed? No. 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 Nah. Okay. Just what did the yesterday? Huh? I went to the fair yesterday. The fair? Oh yeah, the the big uh, Georgia State Fair in Perry, Georgia. Like it's ridiculously big, right? Oh, it's insane. Yeah. I I did see your video that you made about all the food y'all ate. Yeah. Speaking of food, here we go again. <laughs> right. What What was the best thing you had? The best thing was, uh, oh. Oh, the mini donuts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah that sweet, or the ice cream. Sweets always, the sweets always win, right? Oh, yes. Like, what, what was we the, have a... Go ahead. Sorry, what? Oh, what was the pizza? Okay, so they came out last year with a pickle pizza, and I didn't try it, but it's a pizza. It looks like a white pizza. Um, there's no red sauce on it, and it's got pickles all over it. And, like, just sliced pickles. So I gave in this year, and I tried it. 
it was okay. It was like, eh, it's real pickly. I mean, I'm assuming under the cheese was a little bit of a ranch layer. Mm. I could be wrong, but it wasn't a red sauce. It was like a white pizza with like pickles on it. And it was like a three and a half for me. But like, if you love pickles, definitely go get it. I just wanted to be weird and try it. That was a three and a half out of what? Five. Oh, okay. I didn't want to share one. Three and a half out of 10, you throw the thing in the trash. Three and a half um, out of five. No, I ate it. That's when it costs we're... as much as it does, you're going to eat your food. <laughs> this is what we're doing. Each each podcast, I want uh, Anna food recommendation. Or, or I, I tried this, and this is my score out of five. Okay. Stars. Oh God. There we go. So this week's is the pickle pizza. Is gets a three and a half out of five. Pizza was seven dollars a slice. Oh God, that make that knocks it down to two and a half stars. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so you better whatever you get at the fair you better make sure you're gonna like it because you what did you say y'all, like two of y'all just went and y'all basically just had kind of like snacks and stuff i mean yeah like, like it's it, yeah, yeah so me and my good friend amanda we always go every year because we just we don't our husbands don't like to go and that's okay so we're each other's fair dates and so our big thing is to always go and get food at the fair and it's our like one day out of the year like we love to just eat fair I mean you know eat fair food eat junk food so yeah there was a we we had some and each year we kind of do something a little different but we do have our favorites and kind of our go-tos like the red velvet funnel cake with cream cheese icing is one of my oh that's so good is that a five out of five that's a good one yeah but I didn't get it this year because they had like this new feature at like one of the ice cream stands and it was a sweet potato hard ice cream with roasted marshmallow, bacon, and maple syrup and brown sugar. It was insane. It was really weird, but she got it, and I tried. It. I was like, hmm, "It's not bad." See, that's all right. So that that brings up another food tangent here. I can't do maple bacon with a sweet like a like oh, you know how they the, do the donuts. Yeah, they the make. maple make maple bacon donuts. And stuff. I can't. I can't. I can't handle that. Like it. I want. I'm, I'm just a plain donut, dude. I could sit here and eat a dozen glaze. Like, I could eat anything, any just a, donut. <laughs> fat kid, central, you know. But I, I don't know. People overthink food a lot. I believe, like they, they put too much stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 but I mean, you know, like I said, it's a fair though, so it's kind of like who, who can go bigger and better though. It's almost like okay, they some got, wild you know, stuff there. What, what was something you didn't try? That you saw, um, like I wouldn't go to the fair and get tacos. <laughs> like, <laughs> that sounds like a gut bomb waiting to happen. And the little um hibachi chicken and rice stand. That well, there, there wasn't like there wasn't like a like a like like the sweet potato maple bacon ice cream or whatever. There wasn't something like that that you didn't try. Like you saw that was something something weird like that um oh man you i mean there's a lot of stuff like, yeah there's lots of stuff i didn't try but nothing, i'm just asking if there's anything that stood out like that that you're like man i might want to try that but it scares me hold on uh nothing that's jumping out at me oh um the pickle pizza the um because you because you, you saw the like pickle pizza or whatever last year right and then what she said you yeah yeah, yeah. It. so i didn't know if there was something that stuck out like that if not it's all right i'll just ask it yeah, I'd have to think about it. Interesting. But, yep. So I took off from hunting yesterday. It was a it was a fair date with my girlfriend. So um kind of watching this weather too. Um, see what happens, see if I'll get back out like, you know, evening time, see yeah. what happens. So there's your hunt report to go to the fair. <laughs> yeah. But um no, it's been, it, it, which we haven't hunted much in Georgia. It's been hot and dry, and we've seen deer. Though that's the thing, I've seen deer every time I've gone. So that's good. Man, I've been, I have been seeing a lot of deer on the side of the road, dead or walk, whatever, walking dead. So yeah, they're definitely moving. The walking dead. <laughs> yeah, walking dead. New zombie deer. Is that what you're seeing? <laughs> no, no, no. No. Oh. Like early in the morning, if I'm going to the gym and it's dark. You know, I was, I have been seeing a lot on the edges of roads, crossing roads, whatever. And, you know, that's like five o'clock in the morning. And 
Well, the and best dirt. time to hunt is, you know, two hours before daylight and two hours after dark. Right. Yeah. So, so. And it's don't ask me conveniently how illegal to go. <laughs> don't don't ask me how I know. <laughs> don't ask. Okay. Don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I go by the by the book. I have to. I have to do. So. so. But hopefully it's October now. We get into October. This little thing called the rut starts kicking in. Hopefully we'll have some rain and some cooler temperatures. And then we can have some fun. That's right. I we like we really look forward to hunting like the last part of October. There's something about Halloween week that's just that in the first week of November. Yeah, that that's kind of kicks it off. It's like mm -hmm. you know everything's getting right, and then um, my favorite time, which in Georgia, I've I've had great success around Thanksgiving and mm -hmm. the weekend after Thanksgiving. I I got a spreadsheet with everything I've ever shot, and those dates are like. I love that, it. That, that them twenties of November are deadly. Oh yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's a lot, a lot going on. So mm -hmm. Counting it down. Yeah. Well. All right. We'll catch up on the next round. I will let you go because it's it's four o'clock now. You're probably getting getting that. You need to get ready to go get that tree back there. Yeah, something like that. We'll see. Like that. Yeah. Never know. Never know. All right. Well, y'all, thanks for listening. Y'all say thanks to Anna for being on here and putting up with foolishness for the day. Yeah. We'll, hey, uh, if they have any uh, questions for podcast stuff, can they email us? Absolutely. Email you? Yeah, email info, I-N-F-O, info at backwardslife.com, and we'll talk about whatever we get sent in. Yeah. We need to do that. We need to post that on our social media. You post it on yours, and I'll post it on mine. We'll take exactly. podcast questions. Yeah, yeah, give us some good topics to talk about. See what y'all yeah, want to hear. No, no one wants to hear me and you ramble about fair food. Food. <laughs> Who doesn't food. want to hear about food? I'm yeah. in. <laughs> <laughs> but next week, you got to prepare. You got to you got to bring a food like a a food to the table, so to speak, oh. of, of of something. You got to rate rate it. Okay. You ought to be easy. You're, you're eating all the time. <laughs> you can just grab some out of the cabinet, and be like these suck. Don't eat that. Throw it away. I'll do the same. We'll do a little, a little big Debbie's little Debbie of the week. How's that? Oh, that could be bad. <laughs> we'll be having to hit the gym twice <laughs> a right? day. There, uh, yeah, I, I was good. I, I was meant to go today, and it didn't work out. So tomorrow, though, tomorrow. So then I'm gonna be working my ass off in the woods. So that'll that's a lot of work. That's always good exercise. <sighs> my poor back. <laughs> <laughs> or toting a load yeah all right well thanks everybody for listening backwards life podcast number whatever the crap we're on check us out backwardslife.com we're on sports from channel every week tuesday nights 10 p.m watch please uh catch us on waypoint hunt channel pursuit channel youtube i don't know hit that thing called google on your computer or your phone and you can find backwards life i promise <laughs> that's right exactly so Thank you again, Anna. We will talk to you soon. All right. Sounds good.